I believe we are created for greatness, not mediocrity. That we are to live our lives accordingly, striving to be agents of change as we attempt to leave this world a better place than we found. Hey folks, welcome to a brand new edition of PLS Tips with Manny. I'm your host, Manny Demand Lopez, and each week I give you guys new tips and strategies on how to position yourself as an expert in your industry and give you some tips on marketing your business online or offline. Today, I'm going to give you guys steps on how to close the sale. Now, whenever you're talking to someone, whether it be over the phone, whether it be via email, whether it be online, whether it be anywhere, uh, let me just make sure my phone's on mute here just in case it started blowing up. Um, we want to make sure that when you're closing the sale, going for asking for the money, that you have a structured way to do that. Because here's what's going to happen. Nine times out of ten, you're going to get what's called objections. Okay, And you're going to need what's called rebuttals to get over those objections. And a lot of times those objections are the same things you keep hearing over and over and over and over again. Things like... Let me think about it. I got to talk to my partner. Um, I just can't afford it right now. Um, I'll, I'll be ready to go next week, whatever the reason may be. Okay, You're going to get the same objections. And a lot of times, they're just smoke screens. They're not the real objections. They don't want to give you, well, here it is all out on the table of why I cannot get started today. Or, you know, I really want to get started, but I'm just scared to move forward. That type of thing, they don't really want to share with you. They want to give you the same things they keep getting away with basically to most salespeople because over 80% of them are not going to even try to overcome the objection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you guys a five-step method to handling objections that I've used personally to sell millions and I mean millions this is not you know to be cliche or anything like that but millions of dollars in actual business and I've used these techniques over the last 10 years in doing this. So let me share with you exactly what I do step by step and if it's something of value I want you to start implementing this in your business today because it doesn't matter what you're selling you could be selling lollipops on the store on the street you could be selling you know multi-million dollar homes we're gonna get the same things over and over again so the first thing you do step one in handling the objection this is a five-step method the first step is you have to hear them out completely and give a softening statement okay now when I say hear them out that means do not object do not cut them off and just try to answer the objection. Hear them out completely whenever they tell you, oh, I can't get started because of whatever reason. I, I need to think about it. I need to talk to my spouse and, you know, whatever. Get all that information down, whatever they're telling you. The five-step method, step one, hear them out completely and put in a softening statement. Now, a softening statement is something like, you know, I completely understand how you feel, Mrs. Jones. I completely get it. I totally understand that a lot of my clients felt the same exact way. You want to feel as if you understand them, not just, oh, well, here's the reason why you're wrong and I'm right. You need to do business with me. No, you want to get on their side. They need to feel as if you are just the same as them. Okay, so that the first step is giving that softening statement and hear them out. The next thing is you want to question and isolate that objection. This is step two, question and isolate. Now, what do you mean by question and isolate? Well, by question and isolate, what I mean is you want to take that objection and make sure it is valid. Okay. So one of the things that I do is I ask things like, um, well, I completely understand how you feel, Mrs. Jones. So outside let's say for example I'm talking to someone about whatever product or service that we're trying to promote to them and they give me oh I need to think about it and I have to talk to my spouse this is probably the most common one you're gonna hear so let's say Mrs. Jones says well Manny I don't want to get started today I really need to think about it and you know I I also need to talk to my spouse about this okay so what I would say is you know I completely understand Mrs. Jones no problem whatsoever a lot of my clients they have spouses, they need to think about it. This is a lot of information to take in at once. I completely get it, no problem. The question I have though, if this, let's say for example, you already did your thinking, you did your due diligence, you're good on that, and you know your husband was not a factor in making a decision, your spouse was not a factor in making a decision, you'd obviously be starting right now, correct? So you question and isolate. So the question is to get them to understand that if this was not a real objection, if this was taken care of already 
we would be starting right now. We'd be shaking hands, right? The reason why we ask that question is because we want to isolate the objection. We want to make sure that this is a real objection. Because if they give you any answer other than yes, then that is not the real objection. Because basically what they're saying is if this was not an issue, if you didn't have to think about it, and you uh, didn't have a spouse to talk to, this was solely your decision, we'd be moving forward. And if they didn't say yes, then there's a real objection you need to get over. So then they need to make sure they say yes. Of course, yes, Manny, you know, I would begin started today if I didn't have to talk to my partner and I already thought about it and I didn't have to think about this. Yes, I'd begin started. Perfect. So the next thing is you want to answer that objection. So if they said no, then, okay, well, what is the issue? Okay, what is it then else that, that's stopping you from moving forward? If it's not just thinking about it or whatever. They may come up with something, well, you know, the, the down payment you have is a little high. I can't get started with that either. You know, get into a I can't afford option. Okay, so something like that. So you want to keep getting those objections, all right? So write them down if you need to. If they tell, okay, I need to think about it. I need to talk to my spouse. And I, need, and I can't afford it, whatever the reason is, okay? So let's say we're, we're still talking to Mrs. Jones and she has the, I think about it and I can, uh, and I need to talk to my partner about it. Next thing is I want to answer those objections and I'm going to answer those individually, okay? So when somebody says, I want to think about it, you know, I completely get want to think about it. Here's one of the, object, the rebuttals that I use to overcome that objection. Scientifically speaking, by you thinking about it, by tomorrow, if you've lost 25% of what we've just learned today, okay, within two days, which is a typical follow-up time, you've lost half of what we've discussed today in our conversation. So actually today, you're putting yourself at a disadvantage by waiting to try and make a decision because in the next two days, you're going to forget half of the stuff we talked about and you're not going to be able to make an informed decision. So while I've got you on the phone right now, let me answer any questions that you may have about our product, about our service, about the company. So this way I can give you a very clear understanding of whether or not you should be doing business with me. Now, if your credentials are there, you should have a way for them to bring it right online or be able to send them credentials, or they should have been able to done research on it. You should be able to share with them the value that you have that gets you that credentials in your industry, okay? You shouldn't just be like, oh, well, this is great because I said it's great. You should have proof and data to back it up, okay? So that should be automatic. Um, the other thing of them want to think about it, maybe they just don't fully understand the system. So let them know, hey, by not getting yourself an advantage today, you're putting yourself at a disadvantage tomorrow. So maybe there's something that you're a little unclear of still about the program. And then focus on something that's a benefit. Maybe I stress the you know unlimited revisions as too much maybe didn't you know maybe that was too much that I focused on is that it get them to tell you well no 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 it's this it's this is the what I needed questions on this this is what I didn't have a full understanding of so if they want to think about it it's either you have not raised enough value you either did not explain it clear enough for them to understand you may understand you may be a type a personality you may be analytical you may be a blueprint you may be nurturing and your person is completely opposite of you you have to talk in your client's language. So make, make sure when you're speaking to them on what it is that you're doing, um, that they are understanding what it is. And use clarification words like, does that make sense? Does that, does that seem clear? Do you get that? Do you, do you understand what I'm talking about? Get them to continuously say yes throughout your conversation. Okay. So then when I overcome the, I want to think about it. So does that seem fair? I like to use that a lot. Does that seem fair? Do you understand? Does that make sense now? Great. Now, the spouse objection. Okay, so you have a spouse to talk to. Great, no problem. You know, more than 75% of the people we talk to have a partner that they need to get on board with this as well. So let me ask you this, okay? If we brought it to your partner and he tells you, sure thing, Mrs. Jones, whatever you'd want to do, we'd obviously be shaking hands, right? So again, we want to get them to that mentality of if that person says yes, then we're moving forward. There's nothing else stopping us from moving forward. Right again, another clarifying that objection, and they got to say yes. If they say yes, great. And what I like to do is I want to put them on the same seat as me. Great. So what do we have to do to get them to love our program? What I'm basically asking is, what is it that we have to tell your husband or your spouse that's going to get them to make the decision? That person knows that partner far better than you ever will. They know what their hot buttons is. Buttons is buttons are. They know what it is that they need to tell that person to get them on board. 
So get them to find find out what it is that's going to get them to say yes. Basically, it's going to be something they focus on. Well, he's going to focus on the price point. He's going to focus on the feature. He's going to focus on the function. He's going to focus on whatever, the marketing strategy, whatever it may be. Get them to say, okay, what do we need to do to get him on board with this program? What is it that he's going to like about this that we should focus on? So get them to focus on that. Okay. If you can put them on a three-way, great. If not, what I like to use is certain things. You know, well, if we get started on a smaller set now, we can at least get him an example to work with. A lot of people are visual learners, like what I do is a lot of visual stuff. So then I would tell him something like, well, how about we do this? If we get you started on this right now today, I can at least put a mock-up together for you. Get something going for you guys. Get that to go on because what I've seen, you know, something that I've seen on my end with people with spouses, here's what gets them to move forward. So you give them an example of when we do it this way, my way, then this is what I've seen having success with people with partners. That gets them easily on board because they have something to look at, something visual. So to look at depending on what your type of industry is and what you're selling, what your product may be. It may be requiring that three-way call. It may be requiring that double one-on-one -on -one conference that you need to have. Or maybe we just be, maybe I can start you on something smaller that gets you in the game, that gets that skin in the game, that locks you in, and then we can also put something in front of them in the next couple days that will actually give them something to look at visually versus just another conversation that we have to do the repitch all over again. Okay. So then again, you want to end with that clarifying statement. This is step four. Okay. Step three was answering the objection. So we answer that in a scripted format or at least a structured format that gets them to understand exactly how to answer that. Like for me, I have this pitch book. Okay. I created this pitch book that's got everything, objections and rebuttals, the five-step method of handling objections. Then I've got answers for everything. Okay, getting past the gate here. I'm not interested. Send me some information. I don't have time to talk right now. I can create and manage my own. I want to think about it. Five different responses for that. I can't afford it. I need to show this to my partner. Just going to pass on this for now. The takeaway, this one's a really good one. So the takeaway is something like, well, maybe it is that you're just not ready for something like this. And, you know, you know, basically you're taking it from them saying, nope, you can't have this anymore. And what do people want? They want something they can't have. Okay. So when you can give them something like the takeaway that says, you know, maybe this isn't the right program for you. You know, maybe this isn't something that we should be going on. And then they're going to be like, well, shoot, didn't you want to sell me? Why, why don't you want this? I want this now. You know, why, why can't I have it? So you give them that option. You know, it has to be in a certain part of the conversation. You know, it's just after multiple rebuttals and they're still not budging, then take it away from them. And that will get them to say, well, no, 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 I really want it, but here's what we need to do for me to move forward, right? So it's going to give them that, that final, okay, it's either you're going to have it or not, right? The one call close is very hard, but it's definitely something doable, okay? It's something you have to practice at. It's something that is not going to come easy. It's not going to come right off the bat just by reading off a script. You got to make it your own because what you have to do is you have to understand your customer. You have to understand their needs, their wants, and you have to give them the product or the service in the way that they see value in it. Not the way you see that. I can see value in a lot of different ways my product can help them. But they may not see that. They may see one part of the product or the service that is a game changer for them in their life. And if I can focus on that and raise the value of my product versus the cost of my product, then you have a sale every time because they're going to want something that is more valuable. That's why things go on sale. Oh, wow, I wouldn't typically buy this, but it's such a bargain. The value is already here, and maybe the price was already here before. But now they lower the price and, well, shoot, that's a bar. I'm not going to get it for that price again. Or I'm gonna, I, this is a have to have now because of the way it's priced or the way it's valued. So if you can raise, if you have your price point here and the value here, well, shoot, raise the value higher so that price point looks way below the value. So they get it, you know, so that's what you got to do. Um, so it's number one. Let's go through these again. We have Step one is you hear them out completely, put in that softening statement. I completely understand. I get it. No problem. This is what we're doing, right? Step two is question and isolate. So let me ask you a question. If this was not an issue, if this wasn't, you know, stopping us from moving forward, we would be shaking hands right now and do a business, right? They have to say yes before you move to that next step. Step three is answering the objection. Okay. You want to answer systematically, structurally, so that way you sound intelligent and you have a scripted and structured response on how 
to handle that objection. Okay, you should have multiple different responses, not just one set way of answering an objection. As you can see, you know, four or five different ways to answer each objection. You gotta have those scripted out. I've had this made for almost ten years now, um, seven eight years now that I've had something like this put together that really just gives us a structured way of answering questions, answering objections, and because you're going to get the same thing with if you're in sales, if you're in promotion, if you're in marketing, you're going to have these responses. You're going to have the same thing I just listed out many times and if it's something that you're going to hear often, why not have a scripted way to respond? If they have a scripted way to objectify you, why not have a scripted way to answer that objection? Um, so number three is answer the objection. Number four is confirm the answer. Once you have answered that objection, confirm that you have overcome that objection. So does that make sense? Does that answer that for you? Does that seem clear now? You know, you get them to say yes. If they say yes, that's your kill. That's your go for going in for the sale. Ask for the sale. That's step five. Ask for the sale. You can't expect them to go and pull out their credit card or sign on the dotted line if you don't ask for it. Okay. Once you've gotten that yes, after you confirm the answer, awesome. Here's how we get started. Here's what we need to do. Here's what we do. How do you want your blah, blah, blah? You know, how do you want to name that? How do you want to get started? Da, da, da. You want to get started? Debit, credit card. You have to ask for the sale. Don't be scared to ask for the sale. If you haven't asked for it, you're already in a no. You're already at the no stage. Okay? The worst you can have is the same, right? You can only get better from there. So if you ask for the sale, you're showing confidence. Confidence in your company, your product, yourself. They need to know that you have the ability to help them. If you don't have the ability to help them, they're going to see that in your ability to not ask for the sale. If you're not asking for the sale, that means what? Well, why is he asking for it? How come he doesn't want to get going? Is he afraid to do business? Is he afraid to bring on another customer? They're going to start seeing doubt. When they see doubt, they don't move forward. Have the confidence in your product, in your service, in your company to move forward on anything that they see a yes to. If they see a yes, go for it. Ask for it. Great. Let's get started. How do you want to get Like today, I was talking to a client. Or uh, I'll leave her name out. She does some um, kind of like therapy coaching type of thing for relationships. And we had talked a couple times already. Um, she wasn't in the position to move forward yet. She had to still figure out her branding and all that kind of stuff. And so we talked today and she almost wanted to get off the phone. She was like, okay, well, you know, I can't get started on the full amount. So I said, like, great, I'll work with you on that. Then she's like, okay, well, you know, I need to do this. I need to do that. And it gets to a point like, look, let's get started. There's nothing better time than the present. We've gone through a couple conversations already. You know you want to do this. All it is is this moving forward. And I could have let her off the phone when she told me, let's think about it and let's recoup in a day or two. Um, but no, I told her, well, this is what we have. We know we're going to move forward. Let's do it. And she said, you know what, Manny? You have great talk, you know, great way of positioning your words. You know, let's just move forward. Let's get it done. And we got it done. It was, you know, uh, about an hour long conversation, but we moved forward. We got that deal done and I closed that deal, signed the contract. Everything's good to go. Down payment, everything's in. So and all it is, is it could have been another calling her in a week, calling her a couple days and going through the same conversation again to try and move forward. But no, now we move forward and now we can start getting onto the better side of things, which is the building the concepts, the branding, all that fun stuff. So all it is is asking for it, guys. You've got the structure now. This is the five-step method of handling objections. This is what I've used to close millions in business over the last 10 years. So take with it. Hope you took some notes. If you didn't, come back, rewatch this video. Like, subscribe. Love what you guys, uh, 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 the feedback I'm getting. I'm getting emails all the time from you guys that are utilizing this stuff. So great. I love to hear your feedback. So give me your feedback, click on the link on this video, basically the, uh, the top name of this video, and comment on the YouTube channel. So this way I can see these comments there, filtered in in my chat feature. They disappear after a couple minutes, or not a couple, a couple days. So I'd love to be able to get those comments on there and reply to those and, and chat with you guys. So anything you guys have, let me know. I will be back again next week. And always remember that you are too blessed to be stressed. I'll see you soon. I believe we are created for greatness, not mediocrity. That we are to live our lives accordingly, striving to be agents of change as we attempt to leave this world a better place than we found it.